Magic bean number two is your membership. All right. Um, you have to have a really good membership plan, meaning you have to have on paper and on your calendar a detailed plan on when you're going to have you know, your, your, your big membership drives, who's going to do it, how you're going to do it, all the different layers you know, of your membership drive. Now, I visit a lot of units you know, as, a, um, as a commissioner, and most do a, a very, very, I have to say, a very poor job of having and developing a membership plan. Some just you know, rely on putting out a few lawn signs and figure that's my membership drive plan. Some just rely on putting out, you know, uh, sending out flyers, you know, through the, through the school and putting them in, in, in the kids' folders. And that's their membership plan. That's not enough. A good membership plan has to have multiple, multiple layers. I'm going to go through the ones that, that we use. Um, the ones that I have a little asterisk on, I'm, I'm going to show you examples of. Um, so I'm going to go through each of these. Um, like I said, the ones with the asterisk, I'll show you some pictures of and, and some real examples of how we do it. Lawn signs, that's a common one. But now the lawn signs, one of the common mistakes that I see with the lawn signs when I'm driving around is, number one, people try to put too much information on the lawn sign. You know, they try to put, you know, like where to go, all the sign up stuff, the date and all that. And it's too small. People are driving by, they're not going to see it. You want to write with a large, thick marker, not just your little medium, you know, point, you know, Sharpie. You want to get a good, thick, you know, Sharpie. And you want your message to be very, very simple. For us, all our lawn signs ever said, and what we did was we created a, um, a Gmail account that the Gmail user address was the message itself. So our Gmail for our pack is joinpack3 at gmail.com. Very, very simple. And that's all that we put on the lawn signs. Um, and when we put out our lawn signs to get multiple uses out of them, we would make like a plastic sleeve and insert and, and tape that onto it and then just insert a sheet of paper. So this way, we could get multiple uses you know, out of these lawn signs because we would use these lawn signs whenever we're doing like a community service project. You know, we would you know, put you know, another park you know, cleaned up by pack three or another pack three event. You know, so we would get multiple, multiple uses out of these lawn signs. Um, and as we know, usually, you know, council can only give you about three or four each time. So by using that insert, after several years, you end up, you know, building up a, a, a pretty good library of, of lawn signs. Flyers. Now, as we know, the flyers, you know, you, you just put them out, you get them printed, your GE can print these for you. And they usually have lots of different flyers for you to choose from. Now, this part's really important. Um, whenever I do these talks and I show um, images of my pack. Every now and then I'll get a question. Somebody will say to me, hey, I noticed that your pack is really diverse. You know, you must live in a really diverse area. And, you know, was your pack always that diverse? No. My son and I were the first minorities to ever join our pack, as far as I know. It, you know, we're Hispanic. We were the only Hispanics um, at the time. At, or any of any you know, minority. You know, so as a minority, I can tell you that minorities tend to self-segregate, all right? Um, and it's something that, that happens almost, um, uh, it, it's, it's almost done unconsciously. Um, as a minority, when you see an activity or group that you're thinking about joining, you look for people that look like you. And if you don't see people that look like you in their brochures or in the activities that you're seeing or, you know, wherever you're, you're seeing them, 
you're going to be a little hesitant because you won't feel like you fit in. Um, you know, and honestly, ask yourself, if you walked into a room, you know, to join an organization, there's nobody there that looks like you or speaks your language, are you going to feel comfortable joining? Your answer is probably going to be no, you know, if you're truly honest with yourself. You know, so when you're promoting your pack, you want to make sure that you choose flyers that show people of color, boys, girls, if that's what you want to have join your pack. But whatever you want to attract, you need to show, all right? Because people make these unconscious decisions when they're looking at your pictures and your images, all right? You know, so by choosing, you know, flyers that, that show a, a diverse group of kids, that's your first step to creating a diverse pack and attracting the people that you want to join your pack. Back to school nights is, is a great one. Um, one of the things that, that, that I would do at the back to school nights that, that was always a real hit for us was um, if your pack sells popcorn, uh, there's always like extra, you know, at least we always had extra, you know, microwave pop and corn. So what I would do is I would bring a little microwave, you know, with me and I would pop microwave, you know, or scalp popcorn and I'd put it into little snack size baggies and I would put a little label on it, you know, with our Gmail, join pack three at gmail.com. Nothing attracts people like the smell of, of freshly popping popcorn and you're giving away a free snack. Now, the one thing that I will tell you, and this is from experience, make sure you give it to people on the way out and not on the way in because otherwise you're going to be sweeping out <laughs> the school hallways because kids inevitably drop it and all that. So do it on the way out. Um, but, you know, that's one way to draw attention, you know, to your table at the back to school night and make yourself stand out. And you're promoting sales of your popcorn and getting people to try your delicious popcorn at the same time. Um, trunk or treats at trunk or treats. Um, again, we would give out candy. Um, I created a, a, a video, you know, of images of our scouts and the things that we do. Nothing attracts children like a video screen. They see something playing on it. They're going to come and watch. Same thing with parents. You know, they're, they're seeing, you know, images of, of people having a great time. It's going to draw their attention the labels that I talked about. And these were just real simple, you know, Avery mailing labels. Uh, you could buy a whole pack of these labels, you know, for like less than, I, I think, 20 bucks. And you know, the small regular mailing labels and you just, you know, print join pack three at gmail.com, you know, contact Al or, or whatever you want on it. And these labels we would put on our on those little popcorn bags, we put them on every any time that we were selling popcorn at Wawa, we would put a label on it. Anything that was going out, like we were doing, um, our per, our town has a big Fourth of July parade that we would participate in. We would make little bags of candy and we'll put our labels on, and we would make sure that we would give out these little baggies with the labels specifically to the families that we saw in the crowd, you know, that had little children. Social media, you want to always be posting, you know, images of, of all the, the fun that your, your pack is having, you know, make sure your parents are posting, um, get involved with the PTO. Um, it's very easy to join your PTO. Most PTOs, you know, have you become a member, you pay five bucks a month and become a member. And once you become a member, um, a lot of times you can get access to the PTO mailing list and you can have the PTO send out an electronic flyer for you. Um, and now you're reaching all of the kids in your school and not just the few that, that might come, you know, to the uh, back to school night. So getting involved in the school and you probably have parents already in your pack that belong to the PTO, you know, talk to them and see if they can, you know, help um, get your, your, your e-flyers distributed. Um, homeschool groups. These are people that are homeschooling their kids. They want what we have. They want their kids to have some 
social interaction with other groups. And where do homeschool um, parents meet? They meet at your big libraries. You know, so if you have like a really big library, you know, in your in your county, that's where they usually go, um, and you can find them online. You know, so connect with them and, and make sure that you're marketing to them and letting them know, uh, you know, when your you know when your pack meets and and when your next sign up night is. Develop relations, you know, with your community, with with your town leaders. Now. Uh, I'm going to share a story. In our town here in, in Roblin, we have a tremendous relationship with our, our town, with our township, and with our school. Um, our town provides us with a free, with, with two free meeting places. We have uh, one building that's in the middle of a park. Um, it's, a, it's like it's a small Cape Cod size, Cape, Cape Cod size building in the middle of a park that's been recently renovated as a really cool playground and all that. And the township pays all the utilities on this building and lets us use this for free. And that's where we have a lot of our den meetings. Um, and then we also have a lot of den meetings in our schools for our, our, our cubs, you know, for our, our tigers and lions and, and our younger kids, they meet in the classrooms. And then our, our Boy Scout troop, we have a whole nother building that the township just recently gave us and we call that the Scout House. And this is um, a three bedroom ranch that sits on about four acres of wooded, of wooded acres and has a brook that flows through perfect for a Boy Scout and you know, for a boy troop and a girl troop to meet. Now, how did we get this? it wasn't just given to us from the very beginning. It all started a long time ago, um, just from the relationship that we developed you know, with our town. We just started doing things for the town, not by being asked, we just would, you know, ooh, something needed to be cleaned up, we would do it. And then eventually the town started asking us, hey, you know, um, could the scouts paint this, you know, one retaining wall, you know, in town? Oh yeah, sure, no problem. We would ask them for you know service projects that we could do. Um, we would clean up you know after the, the the big township Easter egg hunt. We would clean up after the parade, um, and eventually they started asking us what they could do for us because of everything that we were doing you know for the township. So it's developed it developed as such a, a big thing that they asked us what we needed and when this these properties became available that the township was taking over. They asked if, if that could help us. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it's a give and take. You got to develop these relationships. You got to plant the seeds and eventually it, it'll pay off. Um, you know, we participate in the parades, the carnivals. Um, we run the Easter egg hunts. You know, so these are all, you know, great, great things. Now the scout talk, this was what really made us take off, you know, in my opinion. The very first scout talk that I did, it was just myself and my DE. And, you know, this was back when they would let you pretty much have like an assembly with, with just, you know, at the time it was just boys. So they would just pull all the boys out of class and, you know, let us talk to them, you know, for a little while. And, you know, those days are long gone. So we had to you know, change how we did it. So once they stopped letting us you know, do those assemblies, and now that it's, you know, uh, that girls are, are included too, but now very few schools allow you to come in, you know, to do just a, a scout talk. I came up with the idea. I said, hey, you guys still have recess, right? And the principal says, yeah, but, you know, recess is really only about 15 minutes. What can you do in 15 minutes? That's more time than I need. I said, all I really need is like about eight minutes. And I'm like, really, what are you going to do in eight minutes? And I said, well, I'm going to show a three to four minute long video. And then I'm going to take, you know, questions, you know, for the rest of the time. I'm like, okay, sure. Have at it. So that's what we did. So um, the first time that I did the, the scout talk, like I said, it was just me and a DE. And that just didn't go over very well because kids don't really want to hear about scouts you know from you know two grown men um so i decided you know what maybe i'll start showing some images so i started 
um, putting together pictures, you know, of our pack and things that we've done. And that started getting them excited. And then I realized, hey, you know what? What if on the day of the scout talk, I have all of my scouts wear, you know, their pack t-shirt. So this way all their friends could see who's already a scout. And that really started working. So, so what it all evolved to was, so now when we do our scout talks, we have our scouts, you know, come in their pack shirt or, you know, their, their uniform shirt, whichever we decide on. And um, we show our video at the end of the video. I bring the scouts up and I let the scouts answer their friends' questions and talk about what their favorite, you know, scout events are. And then at the end of it, I would ask, you know, all the kids in the room, okay, so who wants to be a scout? And just about every hand would go up. So after the very first time we did that, I was like, wow, that's great. And I would tell them, okay, we're going to send home, you know, flyers in your folder and, you know, tell your parents to check your folder. And we'll get a few applications, but not as many as I'd hoped. So then I decided, okay, so the kids are excited, but I have to figure out a way to get the parents excited. So I got the idea through the PTO on the very same day of the scout talk, I would send, I would, I would have the PTO send out um, an email with a link to the video that the kids just saw in school. And I would tell the kids, okay, when you go home today, tell your parents to check their email. They're going to get a link to a video you just saw and, you know, tell them, you know, that if they want to see what you just saw to just click on it and they can see it. And that's when things really, really started happening for us. Because in my video, they would see all the cool stuff that we we're doing. We have, you know, Pinewood Derby. We have a Cubmobile race. Um, if you don't know what a Cubmobile is, a Cubmobile is pretty much like a giant Pinewood Derby car that scouts sit in and they go down a ramp and they just race side by side, you know, in a parking lot. Lots and lots of fun. And when the scouts see this in the video, the kid's like, oh, I got to drive that car. You know, so we created what I call the vanishing incentive. I didn't invent it. Car dealers use it all the time. And the vanishing incentive is you tell the kids, okay, look, if you want to drive that car, tell your parents to sign you up, you know, you know, by, you know, June, whatever, and you can drive that car, you know, in two weeks. And the kids, oh, okay, I got to go home and tell my parents. And this way you get the people to join when you want them to, because otherwise they'll take the info and that info will just sit on their counter and they won't really act on it. And then they forget about it. But if you have a really cool event that the kids are excited about, the kids are going to make sure that they remind their parent, you know, to sign them up. Okay, great. Okay. So we're talking about our scout talk. So in the scout talk, you want to show the fun. You want to make sure you're showing not only still images, but video images. Your video images are going to be the most exciting. And when you make your scout talk video, you want to make sure you keep it short. You don't want it to be too long. Anywhere from like three minutes to four minutes, you know, it, it is good. Um, if you're going to put your video out on social media, you can make it even shorter because um, those tend to be like only like. 10 seconds, a lot of times, you know, people just post something in the background. Um, and until you have your own video or until you have enough images, if you're a new pack um, to, to put together your own, you can download lots of great videos from scoutingwire.org. Um, you just go to the brand center, you know, once you get on there and you know, you'll have to enable certain cookies um, and you have to create a login but these videos are totally free to you. And I encourage you to use them because there's some really, really great ones. There are um, some great leader testimonials, you know, where you have, you know, parents talking about, you know, why they decided, you know, to become, you know, a, a den leader and why they decided to become a cub master and all of that. And, and those are just very, very great tools, you know, to share with prospective parents. Um, but by, using these videos that they have this is how you can kind of fake it until you make it you know this is where you know you can put together videos you know that show girls uh, videos that show a, a very diverse group of scouts you know working together and you just you know stitch these short videos together there's like a 
tremendous, tremendous amount of videos available. Um, there's lots of current ones, you know, where they're showing, you know, kids wearing masks and, you know, scouts getting outdoors again, you know, during COVID. So take advantage of these. These are some really, really great resources. Um, like I said, you invite your current scouts to wear their pack t-shirt to the scout talk, have the flyers ready to go home on the day of the scout talk. And then, you know, very, very important to make sure or make a really strong effort to try to either send a link to that same video through your PTO or, or, or to post it, you know, somehow. Um, and remember to use the vanishing incentive. Very, 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 very important. Um, like I said, it gets the kids excited and it makes them join when you want to join. Now, we recruit all year round. Like I said, we put labels on everything that we do. Um, when we're selling popcorn, you know, so there's always, it's always the right time, you know, to join. Now, I've spoken to, to some leaders that say, oh, no, they should join, you know, at the beginning of the year, so they're not interrupting. It's like, no, it, it doesn't matter. In, in Cub Scouts, they advance by grade, you know, so they might not earn that rank, you know, patch for, for that, um, that particular grade, but the following year, they'll be able to do that. So it, it, it's, it's a moot point. They can join at any time and start having fun at any time. Um, and just make sure that your sign up event is a fun event. Don't make it like, you know, have people show up to just your regular, uh, you know, a regular pack meeting where you're just, you know, uh, presenting awards because to somebody new, it's completely out of context. They have no idea what they're really looking at, you know, so we always try to make our sign up event, you know, be either, you know, our Cubmobile race, um, a Pinewood Derby, um, you know, our family camp out that I spoke about. And the way that we turn that into a vanishing event is we would tell parents, um, we would invite them to come, you know, for games during the day. And sometimes we invite them, you can invite them to stay for dinner. And we would say, if you want to stay for the campfire and sleep over, you have to join. And we would set up extra tents. You know, so if somebody decided they wanted to join and they wanted to try sleeping over, we would have an extra tent set up for them. And it's here in town. So if it doesn't work out for them or they forget something, they can just easily run back home. But you want to make it fun. You want to make sure that what they're coming to the first time is going to knock it out of the park for them. They're going to have a great, great experience. All right, I'm going to show you a real, you know, quick um, uh, little segment of, of, of the, uh, the Scout Talk video that I created. Just show you a little bit about our pack and some of the things that we did. I'm not going to play the whole video, but I'll just skip through so you can just get an idea of what we created. Yeah, so I'm just going to skip around a little bit. These are like some of our minute to win it games, you know, at our our family camp out. You know, so when parents see images like this of kids having fun, parents having fun with their kids, you know, it gets them excited.
You know, so you just want to make sure you highlight, you know, some of the best things, you know, that your pack does. And once we started including images of summer camp, our camp attendance went up. Yeah, you know, so that's just a little example of what of what we would do. And then um, there are videos, like I said, that you can get, you know, from that national website from the Brand Center, and you can stitch that together. And these are some that I put together, you know, from them. Very well produced. <laughs> You get the idea. Now, I even included um, images, you know, showing older scouts because you always want to promote what's next. Um, and that's a mistake that a lot of units don't do. Again, like I said earlier, you know, if parents don't realize that there's more like, you know, to Cub Scouts that there's, you know, becoming a member of a troop and all you know, the adventures that you can have as a troop, um, they don't know that there's more and they don't start planning for that. And they're not, you, so you always have to promote what the next thing is. And I always say to people, if you want more um, Boy Scouts, you have to show Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, because Cub Scouts turn into you know, Boy Scouts, you know, or, or Scouts BSA, you, know, you want to show the girls, you know, the older Scouts, you, you want to show them what's next, so that they know what to look forward to. Um, and if your school doesn't let you do a, um, you know, a Scout talk, or, or as we used to call them, Boy Talks, um, throw a Scout party. And what's a Scout party? Um, you have your Scouts, you know, hand out invitations to their friends, and it's an invitation you know, to, you could have it either in your meeting place, have it outdoors, but make sure you have like some of your best games, you know, on hand so that it's a fun day for the scouts and for the parents, you know, um, and you can combine that, you know, with a family camp out. And again, you know, remember to use that vanishing incentive. Um, peer to peer cards. This is another one that that's been very, very popular and has done very well you know, for some of our units. And you can print these cards very inexpensively. Um, you can go online, um, you can, I think you print like 500 of these for like 30 bucks, uh, just about any of, of those online, you know, uh, card print sites. Um, and real important on these, uh, people have been using the QR codes and this QR code takes them right directly to your landing page if you're pack doesn't have a website, I encourage you to, to get one. And on your website, you know, make sure you have, you know, like um, some images of the things that, you, that your pack is doing, your contact info. And the way you use these peer-to-peer -peer cards, you give them out not only to your scouts to hand out, but to your parents. And you could even, you know, create on the back, you know, a space where you write in the date and time of your next, you know, scout event. Um, so parents know, you know, what you're, they're being invited to and when it is. Um, or you can even, you know, just, you know, print it, you know, if you want. Um, use again, using those Avery labels. So it's real quick and easy. It's nice and neat. And it's not handwritten. You can just stick it right onto the back and it looks very professional and very slick. 
Um, but you have to promote. Again, your membership plan has to be multi, multi-layered. Um, and if you have the funds, you know, to invest in your pack, um, some units make even these big, you know, um, banners. Uh, this unit, they happen, um, th this they put at their municipal recycling center, a place that everybody in town, you know, goes to. So a great spot and great location for this. They were able to get this printed, you know, from a local printer, you know, fairly inexpensively. Now, um, when you're doing your membership uh, drive, very important to have a new member coordinator. Some of you uh, on this today are new member coordinators. And that's a very, very responsible position because you are the first person that new parents are going to meet. Um, so one of the things I just taught the uh, new member coordinator training, and one of the things that, that I was telling them is when you when you're out there recruiting, I pref I think it's better if you're not in uniform where you have all of your patches and awards and all that on it. It's intimidating to a new parent. Um, they think that you're an employee. They think that you're a professional scouter. And they don't realize that you're a volunteer, just like them. You know, so if you're dressed in just, you know, a packed T-shirt or a packed sweatshirt, um, it makes you more approachable and it makes you come off more as a volunteer and not a professional. Um, when you're recruiting, you want to make sure that you gather their contact info electronically. Um, don't do the, the manual handwritten sign up. I'm going to tell you a story. This is part of my story um, that I left out in the beginning. When my son and I first went to our, our first back to school night to join, we signed up you know, on one of those, you know, paper rosters and we went home, waited to be contacted. Nobody ever contacted me. You know, so we could have either just forgotten about scouts because we were already doing, you know, soccer. And we could have said, oh, you know, that's it. I guess, you know, they didn't call us. But somebody had made an impression on me a long time ago. I was a scout for just about a year when I lived in New York. And, um, you know, that that Cub Master left an impression on me. And I knew that someday when I had a son, you know, and children, I want them to be scouts as well. And that impression led me to, to try to find the pack and, and, and make sure that, that we joined. You know, so once we finally joined, I found out the reason, you know, why we didn't get contact, contacted. And the reason was, that the person sending out the emails, they had transposed, you know, a letter or something in my email address, and I never got the email. But they never called. They just assumed that oh, they sent out the email. They just weren't interested, and we didn't follow up. And you know, had I not gone back, um, I would not have had you know the amazing scout career that I've had. I would not have had the opportunity to affect the lives of the hundreds, literally hundreds of kids that I've recruited into scouting and that I've mentored, you know, over the past 12 years, you know, so very important that you gather this information electronically. So now, we'll, so what we started doing was we created an Excel spreadsheet and we'd bring either a laptop or an iPad and we would just let the parents fill in the information, just type it in this way. There's no chance, you know, of an error. The other thing that, that we do is when people want to join, you want to send the information right away. You don't want to delay. Um, so we would have, you know, the, uh, we, we have a, a pre-printed, you know, thank you for inquiring about, you know, joining pack three, you know, letter already pre-written. And in it, we have, you know, our next events, upcoming events, what to do next, you know, how do you join and all of that info already on it so that right after we have our sign up event you know or back to school night where we gathered all of this info later that evening or early in the, the next morning that email goes out you know to all of those you know people that, that we contacted and we keep a spreadsheet on them um, we send the email then we follow up with a phone call we keep track of when we got the phone call we invite them to the next event and the next one and you just keep 
inviting them until they either join or until they say, hey, you know, we're, we're not interested. But you don't just assume that just because you sent out the email that that was it. Um, you got to follow up. The phone call is very, very important to follow up. Make signing up as easy as possible. Um, I would offer to, to bring um, applications, you know, to, to people. I would drop them off in their mailbox. Now you can do the applications online, you know, make sure you have that set up, you know, on your PAC site, you know, so that you have those ready to go. Make sure you have your, your PIN set up on your, on your site. Um, if you don't know what your PIN is, talk to your DE. Your PIN is basically, um, it's an ID that's given to every unit and it's where people are directed when they're looking to join a pack. If they just go to, you know, the uh, scouting.org, um, you know, site, you know, or if they go to be a scout, it'll direct them, you know, to their nearest pack when they put in their, their, their zip code. So if your pack's pin is active, then you will be contacted if somebody wants to join you that that's in your area. So you want to make sure that your contacts in that pin are up to date and that whoever is receiving that has the materials ready to go. So as soon as somebody, um, somebody's info pops up saying that they want to join, they can send that out, you know, quickly and there isn't a delay. Send a thank you for inquiring about joining. Um, and, I, and I'm going to share all of this, these forms with you um, after this uh, workshop is over. I'll send you our SOP, I'll send you our Excel spreadsheet, I'll send you our, our thank you letter and our parent handbook that we send out, you know, once people join. And another tip that I like to give uh, the new uh, member coordinators is create, if you can, um, if you have the means, buy big oversized envelopes, you know, to put your, your joining info in. And if possible, you know, make it a brightly colored envelope. So this way it's easy to identify when it's on their counter or in their pile of other papers. In there, you're gonna put in, you know, upcoming events, you could put in an application, you could put in your parent handbook, um, adult um, application. You could even put in, you know, the adult survey form. If you're not familiar with what this is, it's basically, there's a form um, that you can download and it, it asks um, the parent, you know, about you know their hobbies and interests and um, special skills that they might have, you know that they might even be interested in, in teaching or demonstrating, um, you know. So those are all that's all great stuff to put in your in your packet. Okay, so who are you recruiting when you're at your sign? You're recruiting the youth, boys and girls. You know, if, if your charter organization allows you to to include girls. Um, Lions and tigers, very, very important, especially lion dens. Um, if you're not familiar with the lion program, the lion program is designed to pretty much bring leaders to you because every parent that joins the lion program, part of the agreement is that the parents have to help. Everybody takes a turn, you know, leading. So the lion program brings you leaders, you know, right away. Um, you know, so if you haven't established a line program, definitely look into it. Basically, your line program is for your, your really young scouts, your, your kindergarten age scouts. Um, and, and the way that you, you get your lion and tiger scouts is recruiting at the right time for them. Now, what do I mean by that? Your lions are your preschoolers, okay? who will be leaving preschool and starting kindergarten. So you want to start recruiting at your local daycare centers and preschools in the spring. That's your best time to recruit for the Lions, okay? Now, how do you get into um, these preschools and daycares? If you contact a local preschool and you say, hey, you know, we want to put, put on a, a fun event, um, you know, for your preschoolers, we want to set up our inflatable or rain gutter regatta, you know, for your kids. You know, would you allow us to do that and you know, in exchange for putting out some of our promotional stuff? Most preschools would say yes, you know, after vetting you and making sure that you are who you say you are and all that. 
Um, but if you're going to come with a, a prepackaged event, you know, for the kids, or we now have, you know, those um, paper rocket kits, I'm sure you could sign one of those out and bring that and, and create the rockets, you know, for the kids and let them launch them. It's a ton of fun. Kids love it. It's preschool love it. Parents will love it. And, you know, off you go. Um, and then same thing with the tigers. You know, your tigers, you can start recruiting them, you know, pretty much at any time. But you want to make sure that you're making a concentrated effort to recruit those lions early on. And you're going to recruit all year round, like I said. Um, and you're always looking for adults. Now, the key to recruiting adults. Now, the adults are the key to retention as Cub Scouts because the Scouts can't drive themselves to your den meetings or your pack meetings. They have to rely on the parents. Now, if the parents don't see the value in scouting, the kids aren't going to stay. If you're not running a great program, the kids and the parents aren't going to stay. People vote with their feet. You may not hear any complaints, but if people are leaving, there's a problem because they're not feeling that either, you know, it's not a great program, it's not organized properly, they're not getting their value. And now with the cost of scouting, people are cautious about the money that they're spending. And if they don't see the value in it, they're not going to stay. You know, so you want to make sure that the parents understand the values of scouting. So you always need to promote to the parents, you know, talk to them, even when you're talking about Cub Scouts. You want to be talking about the values of being an Eagle Scout because the Cub Scouts become, you know, scouts, you know, older scouts. Um, and one of the key things that I like to do when I was, you know, at, at the Cub Scout recruiting tables is I would paint a picture for the parents, um, a word picture. You know, I would say to them things like, imagine being there with your child when they catch their first fish or, you know, or they go on their first, you know, camping trip or, you know, or they, they go rock climbing for the first time, or they, all of these, you know, great first, you know, and this is how you get parents, you know, to become a leader. And, you know, I've been, I was my son's leader throughout his entire scout career. So I was his cub master, his den leader for every rank. Every time he advanced a rank, I advanced with him. And, you know, we've had such an amazing, amazing adventure. And I would often tell parents, you know, sometimes I feel guilty that I get to have all this fun, you know, with your kids. And it's true. I mean, I've had a blast, you know, with their kids, you know, going on hikes, going to cub camp, you know, going to, you know, regular overnight scout camp, going to high adventure trips, you know, with the troop, um, you know, all the activities that we've done together, you know, so you want to paint that picture for the parents and, and just let them know that, hey, anybody can do this. Um, I find that one of the main reasons that parents don't step up to, to be a volunteer is because they're afraid that they're going to mess up. They're afraid that they don't have the skills to do this. And this is where it takes reassurance that we will train you, that there are people that are going to teach you things. When I first joined scouting, like I grew up in Brooklyn. I, I'm a city boy. Um, I knew absolutely nothing about the outdoors, nothing. When we moved to Florence, um, I was 35 and I still hadn't even mowed my first lawn yet, you know? So this was like a big adventure for me. And you know what, um, now, thanks to scouting, I teach wilderness survival, I take scouts and we live in the woods, you know, for a week at a time, you know, we, we go on these big, long 50 mile canoe trips where we backpack everything and, you know, and we're just surviving, you know, with just whatever we bring with us. And it's, it's fun. I never in a million years would have thought that that would be me, you know, but these are all skills that I've learned along the way, you know, so you want to make sure you keep it fun, you know, for the parents, you know, by having your know, regular fun outings, um, making sure that when you have your, your den leader meetings, that, that the uh, parents are able to bring their children and you're not just taking them away from their kids. You know, you're providing, you know, an activity for the kids as well. All right. So always promote the next thing. What's the next thing? We said it, Scouts BSA. Um, and then 
I always encourage people to do what I call four walls marketing. This is something that a lot of units don't do. Once they get somebody to join, they stop marketing to them. Um, and you want to always promote the next thing. So how do you promote the next thing to your Cub Scout parents? So what we would do during our pack meetings, um, we would have our, our troop, um, you know, have some scouts, you know, come and the, and the older scouts, you know, would, would lead, you know, the, the pack and, and, you know, singing silly songs. Um, they would do skits. Um, sometimes if we have a scout that's, you know, um, working on their Eagle project, I would call them up, you know, to the stage and, and say, hey, hey, John, you want to come up here and, and tell everybody about your, your Eagle project and what you're working on? You know, just pull them up, you know, out of the audience, just, you know, right there on the spot, put them on the spot, give them the microphone. And when parents see a teenage kid take the microphone and speak without a hitch in their voice, that's impressive. And they look at their kids and say, I want you to be like that. And that could be you someday, you know, doing something like that. You know, so that's how you market, you know, and share, you know, great stories of, of, of what scouts are accomplishing and what they're doing and, and talk about the scholarships that are available and everything that they're earning. Um, but you want to make sure that you have an exciting program. And those are all um, keys to retention. All right. If you have a good program, they're going to stay. If they see the value in it, if they see the, the, the payout, um, you know, about being an Eagle Scout, they'll stay. Let them know that you make sure that your program allows them to do other activities at the same time. Most of my scouts played soccer, they play softball, they, you know, they, they were involved in any number of activities. So you want to make sure that your program is flexible.